Good evening, fuckheads. That almost sounds like music from the Jerry Springer Show. So, I seem to be having some major, major fucking issues here with my recording devices. Apparently, this one that I have now that is supposed to be idiot proof is not exactly idiot proof. Well, maybe it's idiot proof, but it's not bubs proof. Because, yet again, I just spent a half an hour talking to my fucking self. But, I think I just realized what I did wrong that time. And I'm not really going to talk to myself for another half an hour. But I best give you guys something. Because, like I said at the outro to my last one... Brent, that was a rim shot. Not to be mistaken with a rim job. I feel like I've been consistently inconsistent. And I bet those of you that listen on Spotify are really, really feeling that. Because I found out that when I was recording onto the computer, those episodes weren't being uploaded to at least Spotify. So if you're listening to this one and you haven't heard an episode since Wait in the Truck, jump onto Podbean and give it a listen on there for a couple, or jump over to YouTube, search up Tales of a Messed Up Northern Boy, and you'll be able to listen to the ones you missed. So now that I know that was an issue, I will try and fix it and change that from an mp4 to an mp3 but like I've said this is a learning process for me I'm quite thoroughly enjoying it and I hope you guys are enjoying listening it's about to get better because the new equipment is easier than well I was going to say easier than my phone but Nothing can be easier than my phone. I believe the sound quality is about to get much, much better. Still got to tweak the mic a little bit. I'm noticing the background noise is a little obnoxious. A little more than what I'd like. But uh, we'll get it figured. Just going to take me a little bit of time. But in the meantime, don't quit listening. Because I'm still here. Like it, share it, comment. If you're not liking the content I'm putting out, let me know. Go back, listen to some of the old stuff. Listen to those episodes. Message me. Let me know what it is that was better about those ones than the newer stuff. Because I'm getting big time now. Sitting here with a Joe Rogan complex head. Maybe that's what the problem is. I'm trying too fucking hard. And on that note, I'm going to jump in. Give you guys a couple of quick ones here since I've already spoken to myself for at least a half an hour tonight. Then I didn't really want to do another one because I feel like these second ones I'm recording aren't nearly as good as what the first ones would have been. Hopefully this will be the last one of those. As I think I got her figured now. Oh yeah. So. This would have been back around 2000, 2001. Me, Hillbilly, and 45 were all partying it up in town. And for some reason, Hillbilly got fucking out of control that night. And we had to take him somewhere to put him to bed so he could sober up. So we figured let him have a little bit of a nap and he'll rally and he'll come back around. That's what they did with me. That's what we did with 45. Fuck it. Let him have a nap. Sleep it off. He'll wake up. He'll be ready to party again. Or, of course, the good old puking rally. 
So, took the hillbilly back to the place I was staying at at the time. Staying with my mom and my little brother in a little two bedroom apartment. And uh, put the hillbilly on the couch, put him to sleep. Well, he was asleep, only put him on the couch. Me and Hill, or me and 45 continued to go out and party it up. A couple of hours later, we swung back by the house and had some booze. So we went in, sat down, well, went in to Wagen and have a drink. We sat down, we're having a beer, trying to figure out where the fuck he went. My brother wasn't home, mom's door was shut. But we never thought of anything of it. Mom always kept her door shut. So we're standing there. We're, well, we're in the fuck. Then I believe we went out on the deck. And we're having a smoke. And trying to figure out where the hell we... Where, where that asshole would have went. Because he didn't have the car. So he didn't go for home. So we figured, fuck, he must be out looking for us. So we're trying to screw him. Wrap our heads around where do we start looking for this fat fucking hillbilly? Then all of a sudden, I hear mom's bedroom door open. So I'm back in the house. Fuck, maybe mom knows where he went. Mom, mom. I stick my head around the corner. It ain't mom. It's the fat hillbilly coming out of my mom's room. Nothing on but his underwears. Now, me and 45, still to this day, will swear he banged my mom that night. He will tell you to this day that he didn't. And, you know, I believed him. But then, probably two or three years later, Another woman that I called mom, one of my mom's friends, was turning 50. And he banged her. So, Hillbilly, you're probably listening. You want to talk and tell your side of this? You better figure out a way to make it happen. Until then, my listeners now know that Hillbilly was a motherfucker long, long before he became a father. So, Hillbilly, ha ha ha, defend yourself, bitch. <laughs> Alright, sorry for the short episode here, guys. I just can't justify trying to go through everything I just did for a half an hour to give it to you again. I just know the quality of the story won't be there and if I change the stories up they're not going to be as good either. So hate to do it but I am going to sign off now. Nah, nah, no I'm not. I'll give you one more. Mm, do I want him? Do you guys want me to? Comment. I'll give you time. Put a comment. Put a like. I'll give you a few minutes here. Before I get into another story, while well, you're commenting and liking, whether you want to get another one or you don't, somebody help Help me. I don't know where I was going with that. The things are getting weird. But seriously though, comment, let me know what the sound quality is like on this short little episode here. Uh, it sounds kind of staticky on my end. But I think that could just be the crappy, half-busted-up earpod that I found last minute so that I could hear myself. 
talking to myself. <laughs> I think I am finding a whole new level of crazy to me that I didn't know was there. I talk to myself. I use air quotes when I talk to myself. And I'm now wearing an earbud to listen to myself talk to myself. Wow. There we go. Uh, okay. You should have liked and commented by now whether you wanted to hear another story. And guess what? Not giving a fuck. You're going to get a short one. So, the first time I ever went crazy. Like, legit crazy. I was working security for a coal mine that had been shut down. And we had some fun doing security out there. Oh fuck, since I'm telling you, I might as well tell you some stories about that. I was on the patrols through uh, one area that had a pretty big building in it. And it was dark, and there was always pranks being played on everybody to try and scare everybody. and Just to keep us on our toes, right? Well, this building in particular happened to have an old dentist chair in it. And I made the mistake one day of walking through there with one of my coworkers and letting them know that that dentist chair at the end of that hallway creeped the fuck out of me. And I hope if anything ever went real bad up there and we were searching for somebody or something along those lines that I wouldn't have to go in there to deal with it. Well, the way we played pranks on each other all the time, I should have known that that was a dumb thing to say. Because it would have been probably about a week later. Uh, one of the guys said that he had seen lights up there and he was up on that post. Said that somebody came in on, he thought it was a quad or something, up the back side. So the post that I was on was kind of between that place and the old explosives dump area. And I could leave as long as the person at the other area was still covering their area. I was just kind of a crossover. So up I go, and my partner that was with me, we get up there, and we start going through, and he radioed that he had taken off to chase them on foot or something along those lines. So we were going in to check the building to make sure there was nobody in the building fucking around. But when you walk into the building, it's these massive, massive bays for those great big fucking mined up trucks. And we're walking through there and every little sound echoes. And all you've got is your mag light flashlight. We're walking through, checking everything. Trying to get through the building as quick as we can to clear the building. Make sure there's nobody up there. Nobody doing what they shouldn't be fucking doing. And we got up near where the hallway was for the dentist chair at the end of that fucking room or at the end of the hallway and there was a flashlight spinning and then we heard steps like footsteps running so all right we get running around the corner the person i was with i don't remember who the hell i was with brent might remember they went up the stairs, I believe, leaving me no choice but to check that hallway. And I shine my fucking light down there, and somebody had been through the room that had the old dentist chair. And there was papers and shit everywhere, so I'm going down the hallway, I'm checking the rooms. I get down there, reluctant as fuck to go in, but I ain't a bitch. So, in I go. And there was a door to the outside. 
that went from that room outside so that if there was an emergency outside or whatever and somebody needed medical attention they could get them into that room from outside without having to come all the way through the building. So that door is wide open. So I go over, I shut the door, radio that that door was open, and the person that was upstairs radioed back. No activity upstairs, they were coming back. So I'm trying to clear that room, and I'm checking closets and cupboards and anywhere somebody might be fucking hiding. Well, the person I was with comes in and pointed at this kind of like sheet curtain-y thing and I didn't even really notice it was there. And you could see that it looked like something was kind of almost tapping it. So both of us walked up to one side and we went to pull the friggin' thing back. Well, one of these assholes I was working with must have been watching for the hands. And when our hands touched the top of it, turned his fucking flashlight off, screamed, and jumped towards us. I tell you this, in moments like that, they say you will find out whether you are a fight or flight guy. Uh, that that moment in time, <laughs> I didn't try to fight, but I didn't try to run. I honestly kind of froze. <laughs> you never know how you're going to react till you end up in a situation like that. And that was just one of the many fun fucking things like that that went on. <laughs> you know, I was so mad at them for doing it to me, but I had no issues walking into that room after that. There was never my fear of that chair and the creepiness of that chair was gone after that. So, it was a good thing. And then, fuck, months later, I was on one of the easiest, most boring posts we had out there. And it was night shift. But we had just gotten out there. We'd only been out there for maybe half hour, 45 minutes. And I was posted in the truck with this chick. I cannot remember what the hell her name was. For the fucking life of me. But I started feeling weird. It was... Almost like a bad high of some kind. And I started getting twitchy. And I wanted to move. And then it was like, I was panicking over something. I just had this feeling that something horrible was going to go wrong. But I looked at her and I was like, I'm going to go walk around a little bit, have a smoke. And she noticed something wasn't quite right with me. So she hopped out and she was talking, and they just couldn't seem to shake that feeling. So, I popped back in the truck, trying to calm myself down, not knowing what the fuck's going on at all. And then all of a sudden, about a half hour, 45 minutes, no, probably closer to an hour, of trying to deal with this, not knowing what the fuck. I looked through and I'm like, I'm done quit. I hopped out of the truck and I started walking back towards the highway. Well, I guess she got on the radio, radioed her supervisor who had just ran back into town, which was about a 10-15 minute drive in and then about a 10-15 minute drive back. So he was in town grabbing somebody or dropping somebody off because they were sick or something, I don't remember. And he asked her what I had said. <laughs> I guess she told him. He said, fuck it, I can't take it anymore. I quit. Hopped out and started walking. Said he was going to get his gear and then going home. Well, all my gear was my stuff at the apartment. Well, 
he caught me walking down the highway and he was had paramedic or some fucking thing. So he realized what was going on pretty quick and he took me to the hospital, explained to me what was going on. That uh, I was having a panic attack. And they'd get me all fixed up and blah 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 blah. So whatever. I still decided I was quit. I wasn't going back to that job. Then, motherfucker, did I start to self-medicate real hard again. Because it got me relatively clean and sober while I was doing that job. And it's kind of funny how that trauma from whatever has happened will come back and haunt you. So if you have a trauma and it's haunting you, try and figure a way out. Try and figure a way to deal with it. Because if you've pulled yourself off the self-medicating and the trauma's sneaking back up on you and you don't know how to deal with it, you're only going to deal with it in one way. And that is self-medicating again. And yeah, I'm aware. I have a podcast all about self-medicating. I've been doing it for many, many years. But I can also tell you, it ain't fucking worth it. Alright. Kind of a shorter episode than I normally do. But I think this one actually turned out not too bad considering it's still not as good as the one that I didn't record while I was trying to record. Would have been. But fuck it. Is what it is. Roll with punches. And on that note, don't walk a mile in my shoes because that won't impress me and you'll fuck up the pads on the feet live 30 seconds in my head and you will understand why I am a messed up northern boy and these are my tales